Yeah, yeah. Hello, mm -hmm. uh, thank you for the kind of introduction and thanks for being here. Um, I think uh, also Manuel Burke is, uh, is on the chat so he can answer some questions afterwards. Um, first of all, student scientometrics. What is scientometrics? Uh, scientometrics is the study of measurement of science and it means uh, typically to examine published research which means to look at uh, citation practices in journal articles mostly with the goal to extract some trends in certain academic fields. Our goal was to um, extend this research on uh, student citation uh, practices uh, to look at uh, early academic writings of students in early academia. Um, although there are, while there is research in student citation practices, it mostly focuses on the uh, impact of libraries, um, citation policies and catalog systems. Our goal was to look at the topics uh, about which about student rights and the um, authors who they cite. Also, uh, we are looking at the German studies um, because there's a low incidence of citation analysis in the humanities. Hence, we use a combination of uh, scientometric methods and digital humanity methods. Where did we get the data from? It's not easy to get at uh, student term papers because they're not uh, centrally stored somewhere. So we found this website called uh, GRIN.de it's from the GRIN publisher. Maybe some of you already saw it somewhere. And uh, it's a database which holds over 250,000 um, student academic writings of uh, any kind, bachelor theses, master theses, and presentation keynotes, and so on. Normally it works like that. Students can upload their papers and then get a little bit of money for each copy sold. But there's also a bunch of uh, freely available works and on obvious reasons we focused on the freely available ones. Um, in the end, uh, we were able to extract around 500 uh, works of bachelor students at German universities in the field of German studies. In the second step, we need uh, to extract the bibliography section out of the HTML structure of the works. And therefore, we used a regular expression, which was the most time-saving, resource-efficient, and also a fairly accurate method. Then we needed to extract the uh, single reference lines. Uh, therefore, we could not use the regular expression because the reference lines are just too diverse, and uh, we needed to use a machine learning tool. Um, while there's a bunch of machine learning tools, uh, we created a small ground truth data set and compared each um, or co compared uh, some machine learning tools against this data set. And this was the result. Uh, we used any style Crobit and XParser. Um, uh, and the result, XParser worked best. Uh, it, has, it had a macro average F1 score of 79% over all labels. Um, although Crobit meant to be state of the art in reference parsing, it worked not very good for uh, our data because Crobit is mostly trained on uh, papers on the natural sciences and ex is especially trained for uh, papers from the social sciences. Um, with ex we were able to extract uh, 7,000 references and 5,200 author names. Um, then we programmed a simple heuristic for m mapping two name variations like Friedrich Nietzsche and F.W. Nietzsche. And in the end, we have 3,600 distinct authors and 3,000 authors of them appear only once. Um, now to combine the, uh, combine the citation analysis with the uh, content the students write about, uh, we used uh, LDA topic modeling. We used LDA because it's well tested, it's very good implemented, and it's easy to use in Python. Um, the model works like that. It assumes the words appearing in one document or in the same document, in a, document, uh, in a collection of documents, uh, somehow relate to each other. With uh, this assumption, the model creates a list of uh, possible topics um, with words in it relating to the topics. Our goal was um, to make this pipeline, you can see it down there, um, to assign each author from the bibliography a topic. As an example, we have Joachim Bumke, who appears in uh, three different uh, student term papers and um, in two different topics, and then we assign the most present topic to each uh, author. And that was the uh, result of our topic modeling. 
we had uh, 11 topics. Um, we calculated the number of topics with uh, the coherence score. Um, it was best between 11 and 14, and we decided for 11. Um, on the left side, you can see the names of the topics, and you have the total dog count and the relative frequency in the corpus, and you have some keywords for the topics. Um, so, uh, as example, for medieval studies, you have knight, animal, fight, love, king, hero, and so on. Then uh, we combined this topic model um, with a so-called uh, co-author network. Um, this co-author network is a network where each node represents an author of a bibliography, and uh, each link between two authors uh, is a simultaneous mention uh, in two different bibliographies. And you can see that um, people who cluster also are somehow on the same topic, which <laughs> makes sense. And you have a big cluster around Joachim Bumke, who is in, uh, into medieval studies. You have uh, up there um, in the red cluster a topic around addressing the school and teaching system. And you also have a, a big cluster around Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, but he's somehow not related to one specific topic. Uh, he's uh, in a lot of different topics. Um, we compared our results with a study from Alan Bay Riddle. Uh, he did topic modeling on 22,000 uh, 22, US-based journal articles in the journal studies. And um, he found out that there's a continuing trend in gender studies. You can see on the left side. And on the right side, um, he shows that there is, since 1960 or something, uh, a declining trend in topics around Goethe. Uh, on our data, we can say that we also uh, have a continuing trend in gender studies, at least for undergrad students. But uh, against Goethe, we have to argument that, at least for undergrad students, uh, Goethe is not really dead. He has not an own topic, but he appears in a lot of different topics and is still an important figure in the German studies. Um, also, we can see a very big engagement with, med with medieval studies, which uh, Riddle did not show. Um, our approach has two main limitations. First of all, 80% uh, of the references uh, had to be discarded because they were either too short or too long or they were just ISDNs or something. And uh, that leads us to the second limitation. Um, we definitely need better reference parsers and more robust algorithms, as example for the name comparison, or also a better uh, regular expression. But nevertheless, we were able to uh, extract a bunch of authors and their uh, relating topics. And you can easily extend this method to other disciplines like uh, the history or political science or the natural science even. And uh, you could use uh, this method to discover blind spots uh, in study programs or even to promote some research interest in your own study programs. Thank you. This was my presentation. And go on for comments and questions. Thank you very much.